for those that did not hear me. It was good what, I, what God laid on my heart to pray. Amen. So most of you heard it inside. It's the ones online that are suffering through. And there's a special card that they hold up that says, turn your mic on. I thought I'd done push the button. I apologize. So I'm going to invite the ushers to come this morning. What an honor it is to be in the house of God if we're here physically or if we're watching online. And, and I received a note this morning from somebody that is watching. They left it for their mother to bring in to show me. And it said, when he greets us online, I will be one of them. So I'm thankful for our, well, our internet presence. And I'm thankful for all that God's doing. Heavenly Father, this morning as we, we present our offerings, as we give our tithe, God, let us see your hand of provision just open up. God, according to your word, Lord, uh, that you see into the depths of our heart as we give. So God, find us faithful. And we're thankful that we're able to. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. As they're passing amongst you this morning, I want to remind you of a few things that is coming up. If you have not signed up yet out in the foyer, there's a few spots left. The youth department is selling bouquets uh, for $10. It's a fundraiser for them, and it's a way for you to be able to gift something to your mother or to someone special in your life. So go out, sign up, pay, uh, and they will be presented on Mother's Day to you, the one that purchased it, to be able to give to the one that you purchased it for. Amen. This Saturday, May the 6th, is going to be another family game night, and uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, this Saturday, I don't have to go to Chicago to teach. I did that yesterday, and, and so I get to be here uh, fresh to play games and hopefully beat some of you at something. Amen. I know there's a lot of competitive individuals within the house of God here, but come and at that at that family night so far, the youth group will also be selling snacks and, and root beer floats. So bring your friends and your family and join us for a fun night. We need, we need fellowship. We need to rub elbows with each other and get to know us more. And, and uh, you know, just be thankful that God is bringing us together. Amen? So come be a part of it. And ladies, uh, the Titus Together annual fall retreat will be held on September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th in Wisconsin Dells. The cost is $175 for the full weekend. If you're coming just for Saturday only, it's a $50 non-refundable registration, and it needs to be paid because last year they ran out of spots. And the year before, guess what they did? They ran out of spots. They've already booked two big, large houses there in the Dells. And everybody that went, uh, give me a woo-hoo if it was good. Woo well, I think you can do a better woo-hoo than that, but it was a good one. Let's see if we can top it. All the ladies that went, give me a woo-hoo. Woo And if you are a guest here this morning, we have a green card that's in front of you. I just ask that you would fill it out. That's what it looks like from the back. This is what it, no, that's the front. I'm looking at the back. That's the reason why I said that. Everybody smile and say, Pastor Jay. Aw. Thank you. That's the front. This is the back. Fill that out. Put it into the joy box at the back. You can hand it to me. You can hand it to my gorgeous wife in the back, Pastor Annette. Uh, you can hand it to Billy Joe. Just hand it to somebody to where we can be able 
to connect with you, not bug you, but connect with you. And great things are happening here at Spirit of Life, and I am I'm truly grateful to be the pastor of, of such a fine congregation. And, and I don't say that lightly. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that we get to come together and that we get to hear the heart of God through us together as a congregation lifting our voices and we worship Him. And it touches God's heart, but we get to participate in having the heart of worship in our lives. This morning, how exciting it was for, for the kids to be here at the front, up on the platform. And I know there was others that wasn't up here, uh, but we have some wonderful, wonderful children in this church. Um, if you don't know them, you, get to, you should. Bend a knee, get on the floor, look at them eyeball to eyeball, and let them know that, you're, that you love them. Because uh, what I have found is that if you will love them, they will love you. Amen? Ain't that right, Elena? Okay, she's up front, sitting between Grandma and Grandpa. She loves me. I can go through all of them, but I won't. Uh, but it's kind of funny that my message today is on encouragement. And it encourages me to know that we have each other, that we can go through life and we don't have to go alone. We can go with the hand of God holding us, but we can also grab a hold of the hands of those people around us. You know, there's one thing that I'd like to remind you before I even get started. If you will spend more time praying before God for the needs within others' lives, you'll start seeing the, it come to pass that the needs of your life will start coming together. So as we pray for one another, as we encourage one another, as we find ourselves literally looking at the Word of God and growing ourselves, becoming an habitual individual that brings encouragement. Amen. See, there's too many times that we've seen the facade Fancy word for the fake, encouraging words. But when we know, when we have the honest, open communication with each other, things start to happen within our own lives. Amen? Amen. So as we encourage one another, as we look to what God desires us to do, in preparing this, uh, I was thankful for those that, that receive uh, the insight for the service. And I was thankful for them. And I've always tried to encourage those that are serving God and as part of my life. This morning, as, as I said in my office, as I was praying, God put it upon my heart. And I sent out over 60 texts, individually, just the same words. I'm praying for you today. Be blessed. Out of 60 texts, I have received 60 responses. Matter of fact, as I was standing in the back of the church, I had to move my phone because it was vibrating so much it became aggravating. <laughs> so I moved it. What has happened in our society is that we become addicted to approval. We're always looking for someone to approve of who we are or what we've done. So let me give you a little, just a little theory before I start preaching the Word of God to you. Have you ever put something on Facebook, on Instagram, some of the other social media, and you anticipate for someone to hit that like button? For some of us, man, if I get five likes, I think I've, I've hit a home run. But there's other people that's looking for their 5,000th like. 
There's an individual that has followers that are up into the hundreds of thousands, some that have millions. So as a society, we are looking for the approval of someone else. We want an approval of how we dress, what clothes we wear, what shoes we have on. We want to be approved by what watches we may own or what car we drive or where we live at within the community. When I think of and see how people approve of others, it's based upon their opinion. It's based upon their own thoughts. But this morning, I want to share with you what God's Word says about being an encourager. See, it's not about how we look. It's not about how much money we make or where we work or what we do for a living. The world today needs to see us as a church, as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, that we speak words of encouragement. See, scripturally it says there is power of life and death in what? The tongue. In our conversations, how we do it. Now I'm going to go one step further. How do you view yourself in your own mirror? Do you see the imperfections that you're always trying to hide? Are you seeing the imperfections of of what someone else has said? Do you know, and I'm going to stretch myself, and for some of you, you may have to ask your parents or your grandparents who I'm talking about, but do you know at one time, Barbara Streisand was going to have a nose job, and this is what the doctor said? Why? It'll change the tone of your voice. And she was concerned about how her nose protruded from her face But without it, she would never have had the ability to sing the way that she sings. And this morning, we need to square our shoulders and lift our head, and we need to learn to sing our own praises. And when you feel like no one else cares, when no one else has any kind of love or effect towards you, you got to remind yourself that God himself called you his own. That you are made in the very image of who God is. And God is not slack and he's not lack in providing for us as his children. I'm thankful. Encouragement makes others strong. As I said, there's many of us that are always seeking after someone's approval. I know in this house right now, there's some that need more approval than others. But why do we need it? Why do we need someone else's approval in our life? The answer is simple. Life is rough. And life in today's society tears away our self-esteem. People, circumstances, our failures, our inabilities, our sin nature, even the devil that accuses us, accuses us of such things as missing the mark, that we're less because we're not more. Did you catch that one? That we're less because we're not more. Some situations, people are missing the moral mark. Some are just sinful about about things in their life, but there are some people that get disappointed and down and out because they've lost at a chess game. It wasn't promoted. See, life is filled with discouragements. The world will look down upon you and I Because of our Christian values. That's said in the word of God. Jesus himself said, they will hate you because they hate me. We've been looked down on because of our beliefs, 
We've been labeled as narrow-minded, non-intellectual, judgmental, and out of touch with reality. But we know that God is faithful. And there's some days we got to get a hold of ourself. An old saying is you got to get a hold of your own bootstraps and lift yourself up. We know that artificial encouragement is literally demeaning sometimes. We're dealing with, with people when we bring forth encouragement and as we in well, at the expense of truth, we, we say what we mean and we do it with loving kindness and words that brings life. Church, this morning, as a church, as, as believers in this house, there is a potential for us to improve. And for the potential of what God wants to do in the world today, we have to become faithful. Dare I say even habitual. That we make it a habit to go through and not look at all the downfalls of someone. But in the midst of everything going on, look at them with the love of Christ upon your mind, upon your heart, and speak the truth. I learned a long time ago. How to compliment my wife without destroying her ego. She has walked out of trying on a dress or a pair of pants and she has looked at me and she says, what do you think? And if you didn't tell, every man in here giggled a little bit. And I have told her truthfully. I have seen you in a lot better looking clothes. I have seen you wear much more flattering dresses. We were at one establishment. I don't, we were talking about uh, things this morning in our, meet, in our group as we were praying. And, and uh, I won't mention the name of the store because I won't get any credit for it. And for those in the meeting, you can all smile what we were talking about. We were at a store, and, and Annette stepped out, and she was looking to get this certain outfit to, because we had something to go to, and she stepped out, and, and it was just, it, oh. <laughs> yes, everybody understood what came to my mind with just that simple, ooh. I told her, no, it doesn't flatter you. It doesn't look good on you. There are some days the truth learned to be said in the right way will lift someone up. Instead of tearing them down. So it says in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 38 the Old Testament is filled with scripture. Passage after passage that, that gives us an understanding of how to be an encourager. And church, this morning, encouragement is crucial to edify and to strengthen the church of today, who we are. And in the Old Testament, the word for encouragement means to strengthen. So read this. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall go in there, encourage him, strengthen him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. In the same book, chapter 3, verse 28, it says this, But command Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which you will see. I believe within my own life that, that when we have our encouragement tank filled, our encouragement tank, we cannot run empty. But when we have ourselves filled with encouragement, we can do great things. 
I believe as we speak the positive life-giving words into our own lives as well as to others' lives that we can change the outcome of circumstances. See, we look at, you don't have to put your hand up. How many of you focus on all your failures more than you focus on your victories? That you focus on your shortcomings instead of the long-term promises of God in your life. See, the enemy's out and he's trying to destroy us and kill us and he's trying to weaken us. I've said it before, it needs to be said again. If you think you can or if you think you cannot, either way, you're right. So as we go through life, we have to put on this this mindset that God has fearfully and wonderfully made who we are. And the love of Christ in us must go forth from our mouth through our actions that we can touch someone else in Jesus' name. See, as, as I see this house, I see the potential of what we can become together. A mighty force reaching into the world, not falling into the trap of every narcissist that wants to try to tear us down, but we can walk into this world and by the love that we have for God and one another, they will know that we are His. And as we speak life and encourage one another in the time of distress and the time of depression, the time that we're going through and we're thinking, oh my gosh, how can I get through this? I'm not the only one in here, am I, that that needs God every day to speak to me. And the only way that He speaks to me is if I get into His Word. And then someone else will come alongside with an encouraging word that will lift me up, that will confirm what's already been said. Church, today I'm talking to the warriors that's going to go forth and claim the world as the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter how we came in. It's how we walk out. At one time, I was going to put above the double doors going out of the foyer. And it may happen. One of you feel blessed to give the church enough money to have it done, we'll get it done. We'll get it laser engraved on a big piece of oak. You're entering the mission field. And everything we say and everything we do has the ability to touch someone right in the midst. It's not coming on the screen in front of you, but in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 25, David is talking to the messenger and he tells him, go back to Joab. Do not let this thing displease you, for the sword devours one as well as another. But strengthen, strengthen him for the attack against the city, and so encourage him. Isaiah says in 41 and 7, The craftsman encouraged the goldsmith who smooths with a hammer, spurs him on who strikes the anvil. He says of the welding, it is good. See, there are some days that all we need is to be faithful in telling someone of their potential. Now, I can look around and I can point to half a dozen of you and you've heard me come to you and say, I got faith. You're not living up to your potential yet and I've given you encouraging words. Not because you're just special to me, because you all are, but because God has something special for you We speak life into the situations that are surrounding us all through the Old Testament. 2 Chronicles 30 and 22, it says, Hezekiah spoke encouragingly to all the Levites who show good understanding of the service of the Lord. He is speaking to the ministers, the Levites that ministered God's will within. The life of the people. See, if I speak life into you, God gets the glory. If you speak life into someone else, God gets the glory. 
and that person speaks into someone else, God gets the glory. See, it's not about who we are to represent who we are, but we represent who God is in the midst of our lives, who we are as believers. So we have to be about encouraging and being found faithful. See, encouragement acknowledges the fears that people have as real, and, and it empowers them and strengthens them. When we come alongside, there's individuals that are doubting who they are. Well, I'll never be anything. No. And again, if you think you are not, you're right. You have to find the focus upon God's promises in your life. And see, He did not make any of us to be second-hand citizens of the kingdom of God. He gave us the opportunity according to the word of God. Now hear this. We are joint heirs with Christ himself. That makes you and I princes and princesses in the kingdom of God. Well, that's not too shabby. Sorry, that's a little bit of southern came out of me means that there's times in our lives we've got to remind ourselves. And when we don't have the strength to remind ourselves what needs to happen, that's a question. Answer it, please. Sound all like a school teacher just then. Could you say that a little louder for the people in the back? Somebody else needs to do it. Somebody else needs to be the encourager. Because there's days you can raise your hand on. How many days do you feel like you're absolutely the last thing on earth anybody's going to care about? My hand's up. There's times in our lives we think, why are we even doing this? My hand's up. You go through this process of life and you're just feeling like, I know God's got a call on my life. I know God's got something for me to do. I know, I know, I know, I know. And then the first time some sour puss individual wants to rain on your parade, it's all gone. You know, you're getting ready to pull into a parking stall and somebody with a faster, tinier car whips in there. And then on their way out, they tell you you're number one. Everybody knows what that just meant, right? <laughs> You have immediate anger? Like, why? Everything was going good. And that, until that little Miata pulls into my parking space. <laughs> if you drive a Miata, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, there's a whole other story about Miatas. My son's owned four of them, and he's, uh, yeah, he's crazy. So <laughs> we move on. And if you want a thrill or a real laugh, you should watch me try to get in and out of it. <laughs> get, can I have two, two moments to share? He bought a white Miata with a hard top on it. We bought it in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We lived in Kansas. Guess what has to happen? You got to go to the DMV. And I literally have to crawl out. And I look up in the window of the DMV, and every individual in there is laughing hysterically. <laughs> so I walk in, they're still laughing. There is no, there's no stopping them. And I said, I'm here to get this car registered and get licensed and the title changed. And they all looked at me, and they just pointed to one. She'll take care of you. And they're still laughing. So we go out. She does everything she's supposed to do. And she looks at me and smiles to where her ears almost touch in the back. <laughs> that car can't stay here. You got to move it over there. I said, what? She says, oh, this is just inspection parking. You have to move it. I said, okay. And she just stood there. The entire window is filled with faces pressing out. <laughs> They're all laughing. 
to see a 300-pound man get on his hands and knees and crawl back into a car, to crawl back out of the car. And you know when I pulled out after the whole process because I had to crawl back into it one more time? Then I said, I'll never drive it again unless the top's off. They were still standing there. Two of them had walked out on the sidewalk just to be laughing. It was devastating. Not really. It was fun. I was laughing with them because they were having so much joy at my expense. But do you realize that there's times in our lives that, that we take things so personal and so hurtful that we just need somebody else to come along and give us an attaboy or an girl, wrap their arms around us, look into our eyes and say everything's going to be okay. Some of you are facing some of these hardships in your life right now. Husbands that are sick, wives that are sick. Some of you are going through physical needs, physical hurt. You're going through those things. Some of you are about as my wife and I are. We're about to lose our aunt down in Illinois. We, we have all these things that come against us to discourage us. But this morning, church, together, we can enjoy the presence of God. Together, we can be an encouragement. Laughter, according to the word, says it is good medicine. And we find the purpose. Now let's jump to the New Testament. The word encourage in the New Testament means to comfort. How many of you need to be strengthened? How many of you need to be comforted? You need to have the comfort of someone coming along. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting with verse 11. It says, Therefore comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work, work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. And then Paul writes, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted and uphold the weak, and be patient with all. Church, we need to be intentional about what we do. Be intentional. Speak grace and mercy into people's lives. See, it all takes place when, when we start developing the habit of being an encourager. We have to create this habitual thing that it comes naturally from us. If we're filled with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost within our life, it should become easy. Begin with the people that you know best, your family, your friends, your church friends. I need to remind you there is nothing masculine about being negative. There's too many, and if your name is Nancy, forgive me. There's too many negative Nancys. There's too many. I know there's a Tom or two in here. There's too many terrible Toms. Look up at me and love me. Sorry, Toms, because there's more than one. Church, be, be cautious. Just don't always be complimenting perfection because everybody's having problems. Just find yourself not dividing, be becoming inclusive to those people around you. We encourage people. By pleasant words without barbs. It says in Proverbs 12 and 25, anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. We encourage people by recognizing what God has done through them and for them. Paul has written to all the churches that he had started and, and he reminded them that there was good things coming out of who they are. Learn to encourage people with a heart of gratitude, a heart of thanksgiving for how they have blessed us, how they have poured into us. Learn to encourage someone because you believe in them. That you believe in them in such a way that you know everything's going to be all right. 
Miss Mary, I know you're taking notes, but would you come to the piano? Learn to be an encouraging individual. Individual, let my mouth get to working here. By learning to listen to them. Pray for them. And to take their concerns seriously. I am my greatest testimony. That's why it's important. That I know about you. I know your name. I purpose that. I, I become intentional. If you allow me, I know about your circumstances and your situations. I care for you. So learn to listen with concern and compassion. I shared with one individual just how God has placed them so deeply in my heart earlier this morning. Don't know if they've heard it many times or very little. See, I see potential in people. Not because of who I am, but who God is within me. I see the great strides that can be made by those that have intentionality about not just performing, but progressingly move towards what God has for them. So where do we begin? Where do we begin in the encouraging words? First and foremost, take time to do a spiritual evaluation of who you are. And if you have been talking negative of who you are in Christ... I say this with love, you need to learn to shut your mouth. Everybody receive that? Here, I'll do it a little more. You just need to hush. You need to quit speaking negative of what God is in representation of who you are. See, when you start tearing down yourself, you're tearing down the creation of God. He knew you before you ever was knitted together in your mother's womb. He chose you to do what you are doing, and He wants you to excel to become better. And if your worst critic is yourself, You'll never get past, and it's a phrase I used to use a lot, <laughs> you'll never get past the stinking thinking. See, in our lives, we have not finished the race until we take our last breath. And the Word of God says what may be impossible for you is always possible through Him. So you start in self-evaluation. You look deep into a spiritual mirror as you're looking into a physical mirror. And you start building up the man or the woman that's there with open, honest communication. For someone... You need to hear this. All because you say, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean you're going to enter in. You have to call upon the name of the Lord. You have to find yourself asking Him for forgiveness. You have to find yourself getting adjusted, making all the right moves to be right before God. And when you do that and you start praying, God, not just show me, but God, use me. 
Does God use me? And watch the doors of potential in Christ start to open. Where things was locked out now becomes unlocked to you. That we can find ourselves relying upon Him and His instruction and His empowerment. You start then within your home. Men, build your families. Build your wife up. Build your children up. Just don't always show them where they're wrong. Reward them where they're right. And be guilty of praying for them and over them. If they're in your presence before they go to bed, or if they're at school, or if they're out on the job, or if they're across the country eight hours away, you pray for them and you lift them up and you speak encouragement over them. Because again, there's power of life and death within our tongue. Then you take yourself to a place where you learn to start complimenting with truth. Bring admonition into their lives that they become better. If you haven't paid attention, and I don't know why my voice is getting so enthusiastic, but I think somebody needs to hear it, and if I raise it a little bit, you may pay a little more attention. Have you noticed how crazy society has gotten? Have you been to Walmart when a five-year-old has spun on their parents and the five-year-old told them exactly how life was going to be? Something's went wrong. As your pastor, I'll be 62 real soon. And I know that a good whooping lined me out. There's something back there in our backside that tightens up our way of thinking. And some days we just got to get to a place where we're going to adjust our child. Their thinking has went stinking. And for some of you that just want to fuss at me right now, well, Pastor, we shouldn't be beating our kids. That's what the problem is. We're not correcting our children in love. If you beat angrily, shame on you. Come see me and I'll take you out back and I'll beat on you. Some of you just look at me like, yeah, it ain't fair. But when we correct our children, you know what scripture says? You can surely beat your child and they will not die if you do it correctly. I look around, I see some of you guys in your 30s and I'm thinking, yeah, your mom and dad should have beat you a little more than myself. (laughs) And the one thinks that I'm talking about him just went, let me bring it back. I did all that just to get you back in tune with me. If you can't do it to your wife and your kids, the next few points is meaningless. So when you get it right at home, you get it right within your family. And I can share with you how to love them, intentionally encourage them, I have called my son and said, hey, we need to talk. See, I don't want to see you fail. I don't want to see my own children fail in areas that I've already went through and failed. I know what the answers are. (laughs) And some of you are thinking, yeah, I've tried to persuade my own kids. But love them through it. Encourage them through it. Be there for them. The next point is do it at work. Do it out in the public. But really, honestly, if we can't do it at home to our own family and our own church, does it really matter for me to talk about somewhere else? I'm going to ask you to stand. I've had the privilege of dedicating several children back to the Lord in this house. And during that dedication service, I challenge you as parents to pray and to seek after God. Raise them, grow them up in the house of God. I encourage you to continue to do that. If you've never had your child dedicated, go home, read the scriptures, do it for your own children. Make a commitment to them and to God himself. 
If every person in this building would walk forth out of these doors and make it a commitment to speak life, this entire world that we know would change. Because it'll start right where you're at. And it'll spread to the next, and it'll spread to the next. Church, if you haven't noticed, we're in the last days. I'm not saying this politically. I'm saying this factually. They're getting ready to approve digital currency. And some of the statements of some of the conferences and some of the things that's being said is making such statement as that you will not buy or sell without it. For those that have studied the Word of God, that's coming into the last days. I want to see you. I want to see your families. I just don't want you to stumble across the finish line. I want us to finish well. And this message today is just for that. To encourage you that you have not failed, that you've not messed up. Last week, God spoke and and someone was told that you are not a failure. I remind you what God said last week. You are not a failure. So this morning, know that God loves you, and so do I. So get a hold of your family, draw them in close, hold hands all across this. Heavenly Father, right now, God, I pray that you find us faithful in all that we do. God, this morning, I I pray over my sister. God, that you will encourage her through the times of troubles, keep her strong. God, she's faithful and she knows that, Lord, your hand is upon her. And there's some days she gets tired. But God, as I pray for her, I pray for others. God, for those that feel tired and and, and out of sorts and that they don't belong, Lord, let it be removed in Jesus' name from their thinking. God, let us move into a place that we speak life over everything within our ability to speak to. God, I pray for my brothers, the fathers, the husbands. God, that they will be encouraged God, let them start reading and praying the Word of God over their families. For the mothers and the, and the women and all the aunts and all those that have someone in their life that they pour out love to, that mother's touch. God, let them receive it this morning. And in the very name of Jesus, lives transform. And as we speak life over them, our children and our children's children, and for those that are blessed, our children's children's children, that they will see you. And God, as this world continues to decay, God, let us be reminded that we one day will ascend unto the heavens. And we just ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God loves you. So do I and Annette. Be blessed on this gorgeous day.